when you trust in God like this, when you just live the life of faith and you trust God and you know God is in control of your life and you know God is in control of your future and that nothing can stop God's plan for you, you there's a tremendous freedom. There's a tremendous uh, peace that comes with trusting God. It, it frees you up from all the worries and all the what ifs. Or what if he does this? What if he does that? Or what if this happens? Or what if that happens? It, it frees you up from all the cares. It frees you up from all the striving. Right? Like you, some of you, you work with people that they're striving. They're striving to climb the ladder. They're striving for the next promotion. When you know that God has control of your life, and your future, you, you don't have to strive like everybody else. Because you can be confident that God will take care of it. And you're, you're free. You're free, man. You're just free to say, hey, like, you choose whatever you want to choose. And I'll, I'll be fine with it. Well, how, how can you be so casual about it? Well, because God's in control. I know that God's in control of my life. I'm not worried about how, how it's all going to play out. I know that he's got me. And I know his plan is going to come to pass. And so, yeah, you, you choose what you want. You do what you want. You, you, you can strive. You can kill yourself doing that. But I'm just trusting the Lord. You know, in the Psalms, in Psalm 139, listen to this. It says, every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Have you ever thought about what that verse is saying? Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. God has every day of your life, every day of my life, all written out in his book ahead of time before our life even began. He already had every moment mapped out for your life. Isn't that amazing? That it's all, it's all written. He's in control. He's in control of your life. So, so we, don't, we don't have to worry about the future. We don't have to worry about the what ifs and strive and freak out and fear. And He's in control. So like Abraham, we can just be cool, right? And just, yeah, lot you choose. And I'll be, I'll be fine with whatever you choose. So how did Abram resolve this conflict? He, well, first of all, he's the one who sought peace with Lot. He went after peace with Lot. And he deferred to Lot on the decision. And that's a good example for us to follow when it comes to resolving conflict and resolving strife. You be the one that pursues peace with the other person, even if they're in the wrong, even if you have the, the, the right, you know, you pursue peace with that other person and defer to the other person, just trusting the Lord that the Lord's going to work it out and that the Lord is, is, is just going to bless your faith in that. So now we come to verse 10. So that's so you see how you see how Abram made a decision. Just trusting the Lord and the decision. Now we come to verse 10 and we see how Lot made his decision. If you were to write a title over this next section in your Bible, you could call it how not to make a decision for your life. <laughs> this, is a, this is what you should not do, is what Lot does. Um, you know, let me say, first of all, too, with Lot, it would have been appropriate for Lot to defer back to Abram in this, right? He's the patriarch. He's the elder. He's the uncle. They're there because God called Abram. It would have been appropriate for Lot to say, no way, absolutely, I refuse. You choose. You tell me what land you want me to live in. You choose the land. Abram, this is just, I, you know, I'm not taking no for an answer on this. You're the one who needs to make that choice, not me. But Lot, Lot was greedy. Abram was generous. Lot was greedy. <laughs> so verse 10. So Abram says, hey, you, you, can, you can choose. You know, you got the whole land before you. You choose what, what portion of the land 
you want. And Lot lifted up his eyes, starts looking around. OK, well, what, what do I want to choose then? And he saw all the plain of Jordan that would be along the Jordan River, just north of the Dead Sea. That it was well watered everywhere. And we have this little parenthetical statement, kind of a foreshadowing before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It was like the garden of the Lord. Like the land of Egypt, as you go toward Zoar, this land that he's eyeing now, it, it's down towards Zoar. Again, this is foreshadowing too, because when Sodom and Gomorrah is destroyed, spoiler alert, if you don't know, Sodom is going to be destroyed, uh, Lot is going to flee to Zoar. So he, he sees this land. <laughs> and then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. Now, journeying east in the Bible is quite often journeying away from God, symbolically. So he's moving away from God as he's going east. And they separated from each other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, which is outside of the land of Canaan. So Abram trusted God with this decision. Seemed a little risky. Seemed like it might have been jeopardizing God's plan, but guess what? Lot ended up choosing some land that was outside the land of Canaan. It all worked out. Isn't it amazing how it always works out? Have you noticed that in life? How often do we think, man, I'm, this is never going to work out, or I'm going to die right here. We, you know, we, we, we've all thought that before, and then it works out. It worked out for him. So he chose the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan. Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. He pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. So Lot made his decision. And I want you to note here how Lot made this decision. He made this decision for his life, for his family, for his future, where he's going to live, where he's going to settle down. He made this decision completely by sight. He doesn't pray. He doesn't seek the Lord for guidance. There was, there was nothing on the vertical for Lot. This decision for his life and his family and his future, it's all on the horizontal. It's all on the horizontal. It says he lifted his eyes. He saw the Jordan Valley. It was well watered. Uh, that means it was good land for raising sheep. A lot of grazing land. So he chose it for that reason alone. I'm a shepherd and that is perfect land for shepherding. It's all on the horizontal. Notice he describes it as the land, uh, as the, uh, like the garden of the Lord or like the garden of Eden. So Lot looked at, looked at that land, the plain of Jordan. He thought, man, it's, man it's, it's just like the Garden of Eden. It's beautiful. The Garden of Eden was, was beautiful, but it was also a place of temptation and sin and failure. But none of that entered into Lot's mind. He just sees the beauty of it. Not, not the danger of it. And... It says it was like the land of Egypt. They just left Egypt. You, you get the impression that Lot would have been happy to stay down in Egypt. He liked Egypt. And here this land, the plain of Jordan, it reminds him of, of Egypt. Egypt was a place of compromise. Egypt was a place of deceit. Egypt was the place of Uncle Abe's biggest failure. But again, that, that doesn't enter Lot's mind. He's not thinking that way. He sees it only on a human level. This decision is only on a human level. And if you're a shepherd and you're only thinking about being a shepherd and raising sheep, yeah, that's a great place. The plain of Jordan, that's a great place to go be a shepherd. He's, he's, it's only on a human level. It's only a carnal level, not a spiritual level. God was not a factor at all in Lot's decision. God was not a factor at all in Lot's decision. 